This is a book re review for The Great Book of Amber, which is The Chronicles of Amber, and this is an overall book with ten novels in length. Um, five of these, there's two story arcs, five of these are for Corwin, and five of these are for Merlin. As you can see, unfortunately, um, it's such a big book, and as I was travelling, the front cover came off, and I was distraught, absolutely distraught, because I love this book. Um, so I'll probably hold the cover up instead of the books to stop it from getting <laughs> damaged even more. It is a massive book. I don't know if you can get the scale of this book. Um, here's another book. Hyperion, Dan Simmons. I mean, this is an enormous book. And it's a collection of, as I said, ten different novels. <clears throat> and um, I'll pop it there for a minute. I'll use the cover to wave around instead of the book. Um, and the Amber story takes place in two true worlds, um, which is Amber and the Courts of Chaos. I have notes that I'm going to be reading through, as you might know if you've seen my other videos, just because I have information and I might not have read some books for a while and I've made notes of them. However, as you can see, I'm halfway through this. I've nearly finished the Corwin part, which is why I feel like I can give you an overview of the Corwin section, which is what this is about. I haven't read the Merlin section. I will be reading it, <coughs> and I'll give you a review of that when I finish that. Um, yes, story takes place in two worlds, Amber and Chaos, two true worlds. Um, they also take place on shadow worlds that lay in between, so if you can imagine Amber's here, Courts of Chaos are here, and in between there are loads of different shadow worlds. And it's based around a family, a royal family, um, of which there are nine princes and I think there's four princesses. And they have the ability to transverse these shadow worlds between Amber and Chaos. Um, bending shadow to their will, they call it shadow. So when they travel somewhere, they start changing their surroundings with their mind very slowly as they're travelling, so they're travelling from one place to another and they get to travel to these worlds that are in between um, they, they just manipulate the, their surroundings and by shifting between shadows um, they, they can create alternate worlds or new worlds themselves um, by adding or subtracting the elements as I've mentioned which can be rocks, flowers houses, mountains, whatever you like. Pause it a second. Sorry about that. Um, and the first bit is Nine Princes in Amber, and this starts with your main character, which is Corwin. He wakes up in a hospital with amnesia, and this expands as he tries to learn exactly what's happened, and he tries to remember his life, what's happened leading up to the accident, who he is, um, why he's drawn to this place called Amber. And um, I actually have the first book. The first thing I did was I bought Nine Princes of Amber and then I moved on to this afterwards because <clears throat> I didn't want to buy them all separately. Basically. And um, all of Corwin's books are based around the royal family of Amber, which, as I mentioned, are nine princes and I think four princesses. Um, and their father is the king, um, Uberon, and he's been missing for a very long time, and they're all beginning to question whether he's alive. In fact, they're more than questioning whether he's alive or not. They think he's dead. And um, several parties in the family um, feel, feud for control of the throne. Uh, and this, all the characters in the family are all paranoid, dysfunctional, and quite ruthless as well, a lot of the time. And um, even with Corwin, you find, although he's claims to be quite a moral character, and he is, and he comes off as a moral character, um, he can be rather ruthless at times, um, very self-absorbed. They're all very much in it for themselves, 
and it's very apparent. It becomes very apparent when you start meeting more of the family and hearing more about the family. <coughs> and the thing about this royal family is they all have um, extraordinary strength and regeneration capabilities that set them apart from people in shadow. And they have Earth, or an alternative Earth, etc., being one of these shadow worlds. And there's examples of where they've, they're in these different shadows, and that you can see they're physically stronger than other people picking up cars. Um, the regeneration of they regenerate a lot quicker when something's happened to them, physical affliction or otherwise. Um, and they each have a set a deck of trump cards that can be used to communicate with other family on the card. So you, when you're reading the book, he will pull out a deck of cards, say he wants to talk to one of his brothers. He will focus on the card, on the trump, and uh, with his mind. And then the card will come to life when someone else... So the person at the other end can feel that someone's searching for their presence, and then they become open to the presence, and then they can see each other through the trump. Um, that was quite an interesting idea. I, I wondered how they were going to do that at first, because I read up a little bit about this book before I even got into it, and I found that quite an interesting thing to, to get the book on as well, just to go, I wonder how they do that, you know. And I, it's very well done, I like the way they've done it. <clears throat> I, I like that idea as well. And, um... All, all their power... And, all the order in these true worlds and the shadow worlds comes from something called the pattern. Now I'm not going to say spoiler because it's not really a spoiler. This is something that comes in early on. Um, it holds the power of everything inside of it. As far as I can make out, there's more to it than that. There's a lot more to it than that. It shapes everything. Um, but it's also what gives the family their ability to use the trumps to traverse worlds, uh, amongst other things. Spoiler alert, not going into anything like that. Um, so you, you learn more about this pattern, Amber, and the characters as it goes along. And um, it's, it's metaphysical, that's what it is, that's what the pattern is, it's metaphysical. Um, I'm not going to go into that, because I spent too long on and ignoring about that. <coughs> and Amber is um, kept in Amber, locked away deep down. There is more to it than that again, but I can't go into too much detail without spoiling it. And I'm quite certain that some people in comments may, but I'm hoping they don't write anything else to give too much away. Um, and so this story visits many worlds, um, and including parts of history in a place called Earth, mm -hmm. with very similar historical characters and battles and events. Mm, strange that. And um, it, it's not just Corwin that can travel, they, again, they, they all can do this. And uh, the, the characters' behaviours and the way they interact with each other is very intriguing. Um, they're not close family, and um, it will have you guessing who's who's on whose side and who's backstabbing who, who's really um, gunning for the throne, and who just wants certain people to get in, certain family member to get in, and um, eventually Corwin and the story becomes entangled with the Black Road, and several battles come in and this is basically how they become more aware of the courts of chaos and there's a reason I mentioned the Black Road it's not really a spoiler to be honest um, it, it's to do with the courts of chaos which I won't get into because of spoilers and other things and um, actually it's, it's kept quite vague and that's what I liked about this as well they kept the courts of chaos still quite vague you're not 100% sure what it is. I mean, chaos gives you a certain idea in your mind, which is obviously partly why it's got this name. 
Um, but little was known about it. And um, the, the, the character of Corwin is very intelligent. Um, he's very good at seeing through schemes and planning. Um, and not so good at others. Um, quite very adept at combat. Um, not so much as a few of his other members of the family, but more so than other members of the family. Um, and like all members of the family, he's obsessed with the throne. He's obsessed with Amber. And this, this is a recurring thing that comes through. There's a, a, a lot of great storytelling. Um, with these adventures and these metaphysical descriptions that I can't justify with a really bad review like this, but um, it's, it's enjoyable and you just sit there and it unfolds and you let it unfold and I, 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 I really like the way it's done um, my only real criticism the female characters could be a bit stronger. You know, it's it does very much feel like it's the nine princes in Amber and their sisters. You know, it's not nine princes and four princesses and they're all massively entangled. But then it's, there's a lot of politics to it as well. And they're not... They don't make the female characters weak. There's... um. They come at a different angle, I just don't think they it's covered quite so much. But, you know, I, I might be proved wrong just because I've not read the Merlin side. I've only read the Corwin side of it, so... Yes, and I recommend this book. Not this big book for anyone that's travelling. Um, no, I definitely recommend this book to a lot of people. If you like your your fantasy... This is fantastic, and it's the take on the trumps for for communication. Um, it's a, another thing surrounding them. It's it's really interesting. I like the idea of being able to just go for a walk or a run or drive in a car, and you're changing the world around you into something else to become something else. That, that was that's quite a good idea. Uh, and the family politics is interesting, and you sort of get those characters that you like and the ones you don't like, the ones you're not sure about, but mostly because you're unsure of their intentions and you, some characters you go, I love that character, you just can't tell what's going on with him, you know, one minute he's there, one minute she's here, she's there, but there's there's just the odd character that maybe if I came back and read it again I'd feel a certain different way towards it, but yeah. It's worth a shot if you've not come around to reading this yet and you're happy to spend a period of time reading these books. I would suggest <coughs> getting Nine Princes in Amber, that's the first book. If you enjoy that, the other books open it up a lot more and you start really getting into it. Um, that's probably the best way to go about it. But if you, you've read more into this and you, if you're listening to this review, I'm assuming you've pique some sort of interest in this book then go 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 out and get the big book just be very careful of the way you, you put it into something or you'll lose the front cover um, and be distraught um, yes mm -hmm.